Hey everybody, this is Chris Nelson at Go Engineer, and in today's video we will be going over basic part modeling. And this video is perfect if you've never used any 3D modeling software before and is a great introduction to SolidWorks. The first thing we want to do is create a new part. To do that, come up and click this little page icon, and you'll have the SolidWorks document on the screen. Double click part, and it will start to create your new part. Once you've done that, you will have your main workspace here, then you have all the features on the side, and then the toolbar is on the top. SolidWorks uses things called sketches, which are two-dimensional things we create, and then you can use these features up here to make them into 3D models. Click sketch, and click sketch again. Now the prompt tells you to select a plane on which to create a sketch for the entity. Let's use the top plane. When you click the top plane, it will orient the camera to be normal to the top plane. And you are ready to start creating this sketch. The first element of the sketch that we want is a circle. So click the circle tool right here. And with the circle tool, click once to place the center and then again to show how big the radius will be. Hover over the origin like this and you will see a small orange circle and then a yellow icon to the bottom. That means that the center of the circle will be coincident with the origin of the sketch. Click once and drag out, and you will be able to place the radius. It doesn't matter how big it is because we will specify that after. In the bottom right right here, you will see something that hopefully says MMGS. That means we will be measuring in millimeters, grams, and seconds. If it doesn't say that, click MMGS and or click whatever it is and click MMGS. Now we need to specify the size of this circle. To do that, click Smart Dimension and click anywhere on the circle, and you will automatically be able to place the diameter of the circle. Click again and type 128 for this. Click the green check mark again and click Exit. Now the sketch is finished, and if you hold down the middle mouse button, you'll be able to pan the camera around, and if you hit the space bar, you'll have the screen pop up which lets you have different view orientations. Click this isometric view in the top view. It will give you a nice 3D view that is very effective for seeing models in 3D, which you will understand in a second. To make this 3D, click the features bar, then extruded boss space. This will pull up the circle in the direction we specify. Now it will tell us to select a plane to create a new sketch or an existing sketch. And we just created the circle and this is the sketch we want to use. So let's choose that. Click on the circle and it will show us the preview in yellow of what the extrusion will look like. It is pulling it up 10 millimeters. Let's change this to 7 and then click the green check mark once again. Now we have this finished circle. To add more detail to it, go back to sketch, click the top face, make another circle that is coincident with the origin, and dimension this one to be 75 millimeters for the diameter. Next, we will be learning how to use the offset entities tool. To do that, select the circle that we just made and click offset entities. Right now it is offsetting from the circle at 10 millimeters. Change this value to five and then hit reverse because we want the offset to be on the center of the circle. Click the check mark and we have once again finished the model. When you are creating a sketch, it will say something called underdefined right there, which means there are still things that we have not specified, such as how long lines are, how big circles are. When it says fully defined, that means we have completely finished the sketch and we are completely ready to create a feature. So go to Features, Extruded Boss Base, and it will pull it up again. Change this value to 12, hit the check mark, and we have finished our second extrusion. Something to notice is that if we go back to this sketch, the sketch is on the surface of the top of the extrusion we did earlier. 
which means that if we come to the first extrusion, right click it and click edit feature, when we change the value of the extrusion, change it to 15, if we look closely, you'll see the sketch is still on the top of the circle. So SOLIDWORKS has relations to specific things, and sometimes its appearance will change over time. Let's change it back to 7. And now that we have done two extrusions, let's do a cut. Create another sketch in the center, do it on the top, and do Control 8 to make your camera normal to the sketch. We will be making another circle, so choose the circle tool, put it at the center, and dimension the circle to be 25 millimeters for the diameter. Go back to features and click extruded cut. Extruded cut is extremely similar to extruded base. The only difference is an extrusion adds matter or adds material and extruded cut takes away. So go to direction one, then choose through all. So it'll choose to get rid of all of the material in that direction for that circle. Click the check mark and now we have a hole in the center. Now if we go back to the isometric view, which is control seven, we have the hole, we have an extrusion going up, and the entire part is also an extrusion. Click the top plane, orient the camera normal again, and create another sketch on the same plane on that surface. Now use this line tool and have a line at the origin going straight up. Make sure the yellow icon is there so it's vertical. Press the escape key to exit the line tool and stick a circle at the end of it. Go to the Smart Dimension tool, and notice that it says Underdefined, because we can still see, move some of these parts. Dimension this line, or the circle, to have a diameter of 27. And notice that we can still change the size of this line, because we have yet to specify how long it actually is. To solve that, we'll be using Smart Dimension again. So go up to the Smart Dimension tool click the line and make it 35 millimeters long and it is now fully defined. However, there's one more thing we want to do. We have that single line that has nothing to do with the extrusion. We only want to extrude the circle. We want to get rid of this line right here. It is only here for construction. So if we click on it, go to options and click for construction. I'll zoom in a little bit and if you look closely, you can see it is a dotted dashed line and it will not affect any of the extrusion. It is only there as a construction line and will not affect any of the geometry. Go back to features, extruded, boss, and give this a height of 30. Click the green check mark and go back to the isometric view and we now have that first little spire. Next, we wanna use the mirror pattern tool to copy this. To do so, Come to this linear pattern, then hit the drop down underneath and select circular pattern. And we need to specify an axis right here under direction one. And we currently do not see any axis, but if we choose this face right here, it is centered around the origin, which is what we want the axis to be. So we click this and by default, SOLIDWORKS will space four instances of the model equally around the axis and it will show the previews in yellow like that. But let's change this to six. And we now have six parts spaced equally. If this didn't pop up for you, click the features and faces box right here and click this drop down box and select the last thing we just created, which should be that boss extrude three. If it's different, that's also all right though. Now click the green check mark and we have six spires. Before we continue, I want to show you the functionality of the rollback bar. Take this blue bar and drag it up twice so you're right underneath the extrusion. The rollback bar will, it's kind of like a time machine. Your entire model is made in chronological order and you can use this bar to go throughout that chronological order. So now we're here, click fill it and this will add a curve to our services. Come here and change that to 2 and click this outside face 
and the top face of the extrusion we created afterwards. This will round the model and make it look a little nicer. Click the check mark, and you will see that we now have this curve to it. To better illustrate this, come here to Display Style and click the second option, which is Shaded. Now it should be very obvious that you have created a curve. This shows the model without edge lines, so even though it's not as precise. Also, I have this Real View Graphics plugin. I will disable it, and this is probably more similar to the model that you're making. Now, we want to add some specific features to the spire. We want to add another cut, so make a new sketch on top of the spire. And use the circle tool. If we go on the circumference of the circle, there will be a black dot at the origin of the circle, or the center of the circle. We can easily make a circle that's concentric with it. And to make this circle 15 millimeters. We will be doing another extruded cut with this circle. So just make it through all again and hit the check mark. Rotate the camera, make sure it goes through. And now we want to add some more fillets to it. So click fillet and select this inside edge right here. Or just hit the top face and we can round the entire thing and hit this edge and hit this edge. Lastly, go back to display style and choose wireframe. It will show this hidden circle on the bottom and select that. This will round the bottom of the surface too. Hit the green check mark and the fillet will be placed. Go back to display style and show the shaded view to see what it looks like with the edges removed. Now, if we drag it back down to circular pattern with the time bar, you can see that it's failing because it hasn't yet accounted for the fillet and the cut. Click on it and choose edit feature. If we go back to the features and faces box, make sure this drop down is there and click cut extrude and then click that fillet. Ensure it pops up in the preview and hit the green check mark. It will add those features back to the entire model. You can see that each of these have the circle in the middle and the fillet. The very last thing we want to do is add one more fillet between the spires and the bottom. Click fillet and choose any segment on the inside edge like that. Because we have this box tangent propagation checked, it will extend the fillet around the entire perimeter. It will create this entire fillet around the model. If we uncheck it, it will only do that single selection we did. So make sure it's checked. And do the same thing on the outside edge. We now have this large fillet, click the green check mark, and the model is finished. Next, we will be taking this finished model and I will teach you how to place it in a drawing, which is really good for communicating design intent and the dimensions and everything. It will be a nice blueprint of the model. Make sure your part is saved, then go to File, Make Drawing from Part, and double click this A ANSI landscape. And we have the blueprint in front of us, and then on the right, we have the view palette. We will be doing a third angle projection, which is a front view, a top view, a right view, and an isometric view. Because we chose Make Drawing from Part, these views will automatically pop up on the right, but if they don't, click that box that says Part 1. Drag the front view right there, and then drag up, and you will automatically have a top view to the right for a right view, and in this upwards right direction for an isometric view. Click the check mark, and move the pieces wherever you would like. You will notice that the right view and the top view are tied to the front view, so if we move the front view, it will move the other two accordingly. Once you're happy with that, Click on the isometric view and, sorry, just adjusting it, click the isometric view and then click shaded. Also click the front view and choose this hidden lines removed option. Because the top view and the right view are based on the front view, they will also have the hidden lines removed option. However, we overrode the front view's display style in the isometric view 
so it'll stay as a shaded view. Click the green check mark to confirm it. And lastly, we will add some dimensions. So use the Smart Dimension tool. And you can add any Smart Dimensions like you did when you were modeling. So I can do the height of the part, diameter of the circles, and you can drag them wherever you'd like to make them look clean. Once you are happy with how it looks, click File, Save As, and if you click this dropdown, we can save it as a SOLIDWORKS drawing file, a DXF for AutoCAD, an eDrawings file for eDrawings. We can also save it as a PDF, get them ready as Photoshop and Illustrator files, or export them as JPEGs and PNGs. I hope you found the SOLIDWORKS tutorial video useful. If you would like to continue improving your skills in SOLIDWORKS, enroll in one of our courses at GoEngineer.